What exactly is a groove? A groove is the foundation that determines the direction, form, and dynamics of anything that you play. From a technical perspective, it's all about understanding how to feel the rhythmic subdivisions against the beat, whether the pulse is clearly stated or it's merely suggested. But wait, there's more. There's so many musical concepts that go into the making of a great groove. I'm going to talk about some of those today and at the very end of this lesson I'm going to share something with you that's really special that's going to help you understand this concept much further, so stay with me. In any style of music, the main function that you'll be expected to do first and foremost is called accompaniment. For short, we call that comping, whether it's a walking bass line, a ballad, a samba in 7-8, or the good old finger funk groove. It's all comping. But what it's not, and this is important, is being left to chance. There's no mystical quotient when it comes to playing finger funk grooves. So that leaves us with a bit of a mystery because why is it that year after year there's really only one effective strategy for improving your ability to groove that's so often overlooked? The way to grooving isn't left up to chance as so many people like to claim, but rather is cultivated carefully through discovering the specific vocabulary, harmonic, rhythmic, and melodic, that inspired all the great masters to play the lines they came up with, and then through critical listening and analysis, figuring out how they actually played those lines. This is exactly what I cover in my new book, Killer Finger Funk Grooves. If you missed out on the launch earlier this week, then you'll find the link in the description box below. I'm gonna demonstrate one of the lines that's in the book and then I'll come back and break it down. So check this out. This etude presents a serious study in polyrhythms and at 120 beats per minute is quite challenging. What I'm doing in the first two bars is superimposing four bars of 716 plus a bar of 416 over two bars of 4-4 time. Now in the beginning this might seem to be a little complicated but what you need to pay close attention to are the three accents on 1, 3, and 5 of each of the 716 bars. So the way I'm putting the whole thing together is by playing four groups of three accents that lead me up to the last beat in bar two. If you take a bar of 716 and count it as 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and then repeat that four times, it'll sound like this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. If I then add the bar of 416 using two accents, I'll have the whole two bar phrase in 4, 4. That's going to sound like this. One two one two one two three 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 one two one two. We look at how the melodic content of this line supports the harmony over an A minor seventh chord. What I'm playing are double chromatic approach note patterns below the root flat three five and flat seven, and then ending on those four sixteenth notes with flat three root five and flat seven. When the groove straightens out, I'm playing the root, flat 7, 5, 4, 
flat three descending, followed by a double chromatic approach below, climbing back up to the fifth. In the second eight bars, it gets a little crazier by displacing the same concept one beat forward. So this time we're starting with two eighth notes followed by four groups of seven sixteen. It's really important to make sure that you take your time and listen closely to the track. In the book, you'll get easy to follow drum practice tracks so that you can play along with the grooves as well as full track MP3s, charts, tabs, and explanations for all the other etudes. Remember, you can order this book right now by clicking the link just here. So I think it'd be a really fantastic idea to take advantage of this great finger funk resource now. Think of these players, James Jameson, Alfonso Johnson, Francis Rocco Prestia, Jeff Andrews, Jaco Pastoris, Chuck Rainey, Will Lee, or Willie Weeks. All these bass players possess the ability to solo, but their capacity to groove undeniably defines the cornerstone of their bass mastery. As always, if you like this video, please show your support by giving it a big thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to my channel to get early notifications for all my bass lessons. Until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.